Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the Distinguished Faculty Awards Ceremony. My name is Bill Tierney, a member of the Hobart Class of 1990 and parent of a William Smith 2020 alumna. I also serve as the Hobart Alumni Association's co-chair of this Distinguished Faculty Award Committee, along with my good friend Tempe News and Landy, Class of 2011, who you'll hear from shortly up here on the screen. Last June, we had the honor of recognizing Professor Emeritus of Biology, Tom Glover, and Associate Professor Emeritus of Economics, Joe Beth Mertens. It was at that time I truly came to realize what an exceptional program this is, and I'm proud to, be, I'm proud to stand before you today to, to celebrate uh, <clears throat> Professor Emeritus of History, Dan Singal, and Professor Emeritus of Sociology, Dunbar Moody. Before we delve into the program, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the members of the DFA committee. Dave Fisher from the class of 2010, and Lawrence Moultrie from the class of 2004 on the Hobart Alumni Association, and Audrey Platt from the class of 20, 2021, and Melissa Fazolo Krasinski, uh, class of 98, parent of a William Smith 26 student. Together, we received, or we reviewed rather, 367 alumni submissions nominating faculty for this prestigious award. When Tempe and I took over as co-chairs of the TFA committee, we committed to recognizing the faculty members who had been nominated for this award, but who, because of COVID-19, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, were, we were unable to recognize. In 2021, Professor Dan Segal was selected, and in 2022, Dunbar Moody was selected as the 2022 recipient of the Distinguished Faculty Award. We we're very pleased to be able to recognize them at long last this afternoon. <laughs> We are also joined uh, <clears throat> this afternoon by the 2016 professor, by, by the 2016 professor emeritus of mathematics Ann Oakes, the 2017 recipient professor emeritus of English Jim Craner, the 2018 recipients professor emerita of, of art history Elena Cialetti, and professor emeritus of economics Pat McGuire, and the 2019 recipient professor emeritus of sociology Jim Spitz. Please stand to be recognized. <laughs> And now, uh, a brief intro from my co-chair, Tempe Lindy. Our 
Our first speaker this afternoon is the Provost and Dean of the Faculty, Sarah Kirk. Thank you, everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to be here today, and I want to thank Bill Turney and Tempe, Land uh, Tempe Landy for their leadership and service to HWS, and to thank the entire Distinguished Faculty Award Committee for honoring and recognizing our faculty in this very special way. As a longtime faculty member myself, um, I know that the greatest honor is, to, is the honor that comes from our students and the ways that they talk about the ways in which we have ex um, changed their lives. And so it's really a privilege to have a moment like this to celebrate all that students have shared about their experiences. And particularly, it's, it's very meaningful when it's been a few years out when it's not just in that moment, but the ways in which they can see the lessons that they learned and the relationships they formed with you have truly transformed their lives. And so I'm excited to be a part of this moment, to be able to celebrate you. I feel sad that I didn't get to experience um, your teaching while on campus, but your experiences and, and the foundations you've laid resonate today. And we still feel the reverberating effects of the ways in which you have really impacted our, us. So at Hobart and William Smith, we really believe in cultivating strong relationships between students and faculty. That is one of our greatest strengths because we know that by providing that supportive environment and of the relationship, we're able to challenge students and press them into new and exciting ways. And that's where we can truly achieve that ideal of living a life of consequence and preparing students for the future. So um, I'm just excited that we get to celebrate these moments of the ways in which you have developed our students as critical thinkers, problem solvers, idea generators, and as leaders in our community. And there's really um, no one who does that better than the faculty at HWS. So as we celebrate homecoming and family weekend, it seems appropriate that this would be an opportunity that we honor our faculty, I would say both present and, and past, and celebrate all that they do to create this community and to support our students so that they can make a difference. Um, I just want to add my congratulations to Professor Moody and Professor Single. It is my pleasure to be here with you today. find his glasses. <laughs> hey, Thanks, Sarah. Uh, we're very pleased today to have two outstanding professors of the faculty, Professor of History uh, Cliff Hood and Pro Professor of Sociology Wes Perkins, who will share, us, share with us their reflections of Professor Emeritus Dan Singal and Professor Emeritus Dunbar Moody. We will begin with Professor Hood, <clears throat> as we recognize Professor Dan Singal as a 2021 recipient of the 2000 of the Distinguished Faculty Award. Thank you, Bill. It is a real honor for me to take part in the recognition of Professor Daniel J. Singal as a Distinguished Faculty Member. It's also a personal pleasure for me to honor someone who has meant the world to me. The accolades fly off Dan's CV. <coughs> Professor Singal received his BA magna cum laude from Harvard College in 1966, and his PhD in American history with distinction from Columbia University 10 years later. At Columbia, where he studied with Richard Hostetter, at the time the nation's most distinguished American historian, Professor Singal began his lifelong interest in modernism, which may be defined as a mode of living, thinking, and feeling that followed Victorian culture and that characterizes our own times. <clears throat> After teaching at several other places, Professor Singal joined our faculty in 1980. He remained here for 34 years, retiring as a full professor in 2014. Former students of his have written us about how his teaching and mentorship inspired and stimulated them. Their letters attest to the importance Professor Singal put on his teaching. 
from lectures that became famous for their spirit delivery intellectual heft, to seminars that probed the writings of William Faulkner, to thoughtful and caring relationships with them. A rigorous teacher who demanded the best from his students, Singal received the Faculty Teaching Award in 1983, at a time when the prize was determined by vote of the students. What is really remarkable, I think, about Dan Singal is that he also found time to do so much else, and that he did it so well. He chaired the history department twice. He also chaired the committee that implemented our existing first-year seminar program, and the committee on the faculty, or COFAC. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dan proved to be an excellent mentor to junior members of the family. A faculty, as I and others can attest. He took an active interest in our teaching and scholarship and in our lives. And he and his wife Sarah were always up for going to a Red Wings game or out to dinner. I also want to be sure to include Sarah in this tribute and to thank her for her many kindnesses and her shoe counsel and her friendship. Perhaps only another faculty member can appreciate just how challenging it is to be a productive scholar at a teaching first institution like ours. And to do that scholarship at a high level and over an entire career, and while still being an excellent teacher and a good college citizen. Perhaps Professor Singal's chief contribution to younger colleagues like me was to show us just how to pull that off. He is the author of two important scholarly monographs about American modernist culture. He is the editor of co-editor of three other volumes. The list of his scholarly articles is too numerous for me to recite here. Professor Singal was honored with Hobart and Marie Smith's Faculty Scholarship Award. He is the recipient of two national fellowships that are the signature of scholarly excellence the John Simon Guggenheim Fellowship, and the National Endowment for the Humanities. He was awarded a scholarly prize from the University of North Carolina Press, and two separate ones from the Southern Historical Association. The point should be clear. In Dan, we have, in our midst, a major national scholar. And almost certainly, there will be more honors to come. In his retirement, Professor Segal is working on his magnum opus, a book on the history of modernist culture in the United States that will take what he's been working on since graduate school to a still higher level. My colleagues and I have been treated to early drafts of this book. As he finishes his chapter, Dan has been presenting them to the history department's faculty seminar. And now let me welcome Ed Cooper and Hannah Cooper, a father and daughter who really book at Professor Segal's teaching career. Good afternoon. Cliff, thank you for that introduction. Uh, my name is Edward Cooper. I'm a proud uh, member of the class of 1986 uh, and a current member of the Board of Trustees. I am so pleased today to be joined by my daughter, Hannah Cooper, from the class of 2016. We have the honor of, or we have uh, been honored by, uh, um, by the committee to uh, represent the alumni body this afternoon as we celebrate Dan, Professor Dan Singal, an individual who I had as both a professor and an advisor. Um, I thought I was going to be a lawyer, because <laughs> that's what my mother wanted for me. <laughs> when I took a class, my first class, from Professor Singal at the suggestion of the late Bob Huff, um, my thoughts of being a lawyer vanished. Uh, from the very first course that I took with him, uh, I knew that his specialization in American history, and particularly modernism, was what I wanted to do. In fact, perhaps to the slight disappointment um, of my mother, I knew that a life in study, of study in academia was what I aspired to. 
His focus in modernism, as I said, appealed to me. It was Dan Singal who saw potential in me and guided me towards uh, a career in academia. He helped me greatly in identifying graduate schools and wrote recommendations for me to uh, schools such as the, the American Studies program, PhD program at the University of Pennsylvania and Harvard uh, University's uh, Kennedy School of Government. Um, he suggested, however, that I apply to Case Western Reserve University, which had a new graduate program in social policy history. Uh, he knew my interests, um, having helped me shape, shape for my former professors in here, neither of which read my baccalaureate essay. Um, uh, he helped me shape uh, my thoughts about cultural history with that black baccalaureate essay entitled a Marxian, a Marxian Interpretation of the Great Depression or The World According to Harpo Chico and Groucho. <laughs> I think it, well, it's probably not uh, categorized someplace in this library, I would imagine. But I did pass, uh, uh, um, but, and thanks in, in great part to the suggestion that he made to me, the suggestions and, the, and uh, uh, kind of the notions that he had you know, provided to me. Thinking back on it, if it weren't for the encouragement from Professor Singal to continue my studies with his friend and colleague David Hammack at, at Case Western, I don't believe that I would have enjoyed or had the highly satisfying career that I had in something other than academia, campaigns, elections, politics, government, and business. For that, and that connection, my friendship and my admiration for Professor Singal uh, and his willingness to, to great, uh, graciously pass me on to David Hammack. Um, I am eternally thankful. So when I first arrived in Geneva, I had no idea what I wanted to study, much less major in. But fall term freshman year, I was placed in Professor, professor Singal's History 101 class. I was excited to have a professor that my father had. Little did I know that in addition to my father, uh, little did I know that in addition to the commonality of the situation, that I would have something very similar to my father's experience. Professor Singal, through the class, opened my eyes to the understanding that history and the liberal arts is an, is an excellent discipline to understand the world around you and communicate one's understanding of the, of the world. Second semester freshman year, I chose to take 20th century American history with Professor Hood, my soon-to-be advisor. It was after our first test in class, Professor Hood asked me to stay back. I was a little nervous. Was I in trouble? <laughs> Turns out far from it. <laughs> Professor Hood told me that he had spoken to Professor Singal, who knew, uh, who knew he was my father's advisor, about me majoring in history. He said, I understand if you want to major in something different, but you have a real talent for this. And it was then that I knew and declared that I would be a history major. Clearly, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I have gone into a career of, of government and public service. Like my dad, I owe a great deal to Professor Singal. His guidance put me on a path to where I have, I have now a very exciting and gratifying career. Thank you, Professor Singal. We also have, uh, uh, I'm going to read, I think I'm going to read, right, Chevy? Yes. All right, just give me the thumbs up. Uh, both Hannah and I are going to read a couple of other tributes uh, to uh, Professor Singal. This one comes from Eric Rogers, the class of 04, who is currently a lieutenant colonel in the United States Marine Corps. He writes, when I first arrived at Hobart in the fall of 1998, I was not a model student. Admittedly, my idea of the college experience was less academic than it should have been, and my grades in my first and a year and a half reflected my outlook. I returned to the school the following year. Upon return, I found I had a new sense of what the college experience should be, but it wasn't until I was sitting in Professor Singal's class that I felt a true desire to learn. I found his class interesting and memorable. For the first time, I found myself engaged after class and attending office hours to expand upon the material. In short order, this newfound enthusiasm began to trickle over my other courses as well. Halfway through the semester, 
After several discussions with Professor Singal, I changed my major from physics to history. Wow. And Roger G. Schwartz, um, partner, corporate finance and investments at King & Spalding Wrights. I graduated from Hobart College in 1993 with honors in history. My years at the colleges were transformative. I was academically and intellectually challenged. My assumptions and perspectives were tested. And I left Seneca Lake exceptionally well prepared to take on all that law school, a legal career, and life generally had to throw at me. While at the colleges, Professor Singal was my teacher, honors advisor, mentor, and sounding board. My relationship with Professor Singal was among the most central and formative parts of my college's experience. Without the lasting impact of his mentorship and example, none of the academic, personal, or professional successes that I have achieved, either at the colleges or thereafter, would have been possible. I now believe that we have uh, some uh, folks on video. Your dance and gal had a great influence on me as an undergrad and truly inspired me to enter the field of education. It wasn't just his knowledge, but his passion and love for the material that was truly inspirational. I also knew that he cared about me as a person, not simply as a student. Thank you for helping me find my confidence and finding my voice and helping me to become a successful person in society. Thank you, Dan, for pushing me. I think it made me a better student. It's definitely made me a better human. It's made me a better worker. Um, I have an appreciation for Faulkner, but I'm certainly glad I don't have to write any more papers. Hobart <laughs> <laughs> is a place uh, filled with great professors, and at the top of that list is Professor Singles. He was always available outside of the classroom, um, a captivating lecturer, and just a fantastic person. Walking into your Faulkner seminar as a sophomore, I had no idea those were the first steps on my life's path. You were while in Boston. Your brother's recommendation is why I got a dream job at Harvard Museum of Natural History. And you and Clarence Butler are why I have a master's degree. This is a Hobart and William Smith College story. Professor Sengal had the greatest impact on me. <clears throat> Congratulations, Dan, on receiving the Distinguished Faculty Award. No one is more deserving than you. Congratulations on this huge honor. Congratulations. Enjoy the afternoon. Enjoy this moment. You deserve it. I think he's well observed in, in the Pantheon, and I uh, wish you congratulations. I'm so grateful, and I knew that you were distinguished long before tonight. <laughs> and now it is my and Hannah's pleasure on behalf of the Hobart and William Smith Colleges Distinguished Faculty Award uh, Committee to present this award to Professor Dan Singal. to follow that. <laughs> I'm not sure. <clears throat> First of all, uh, I'd like to thank my extraordinary colleagues in the history department, especially Cliff Hood, uh, who initiated the process that led to this award, as well as my former students whom you have seen, uh, who lent their support, and the Alumni Council who voted to accord me this honor. I'm deeply grateful to all of you for remembering me at this long remove. <clears throat> Being here today, I can't help but think back to my arrival at Hobart and William Smith. Uh, that was in the fall of 1980. Like so many of my generation, I had been caught up in a terrible employment crisis when thousands of young academics had their PhDs in hand, but literally 
had no jobs to apply for. Think of that. Uh, after four years in that wilderness, I finally landed a position here. But frankly, I had absolutely no clue as to what the place was really like. Uh, all I knew was that I was finally employed. <laughs> that was why the opening faculty meeting that first semester turned out to be a revelation for me, nothing less. I know some faculty here will find this hard to believe, but bear with me. Uh, sitting in the Sanford room where we used to meet, listening to my new colleagues conduct their debates, <clears throat> I began to realize that Hobart and William Smith was not just any place. Rather, I had become part of an exceptionally bright and articulate, articulate group of people. That was not a mirage. Uh, we had enjoyed the advantage of expanding rapidly during the 1970s at a time when most colleges and universities were contracting. And as a result, we were hiring when our competitors were shut down, allowing us to acquire one stellar newly minted professor after another. And since good faculty in turn tend to bring in more good faculty, the quality would be sustained over the years. I have long since come to understand how incredibly lucky I was to have fallen into this situation. I don't know if I truly deserve a Distinguished Faculty Award, but I have no doubt that I belonged and still I feel belong, to a highly distinguished faculty uh, throughout my years here. That's the real distinguished faculty. Uh, a similar surprise awaited when I began teaching. Again, I had no idea what to expect, but I soon found that I was blessed with some of the most delightful students one could possibly imagine. They were smart, full of curiosity, and above all, terrific human beings. Here, I might add that this is something, uh, and this is true, something Hobart and William Smith professors often remark to each other, how incredibly nice so many of our students are as people. If you would like some examples, look no further than the two former students uh, who just introduced me, Ed and Hannah Cooper, who were quite different from each other as students, frankly, but both in different ways thoroughly enjoyable to teach. And there were so many more, all with their own stories. I would have a hard time picking favorites, but I have to confess listen to this, a special affection for the many William Smith lacrosse players that I taught. They sort of got the word they should take my courses and they kept doing so. Uh, they tended to be strong both in the classroom and on the athletic field. And they could really surprise you. I distinctly remember one advisee who had always struck me as especially gentle and demure in her demeanor, uh, who showed up for my office hours one day in her lacrosse gear and covered with blood. <laughs> I discovered later that she was a force to be reckoned with at game time. And there were the students who taught me as much as I taught them, uh, such as Carolyn Jaros who took my seminar on William Faulkner and provided me with an insight so original that I included it prominently in my book on Faulkner, giving Carolyn due credit in a footnote. Hmm. I was also delighted with the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary nature of our curriculum, which provided the chance to teach in tandem with friends from other academic fields 
among them my compatriot in American literature, Lee Quinby, and the political scientist, Pete Beckman, with whom I offered a course on the Vietnam War. How good does it get when you can indulge in that kind of team teaching? Uh, another great pleasure was observing the changes in students who I had in class uh, during their first year, and who then came back to take another course with me as juniors or seniors. Their growth, both intellectual and emotional, was often quite astounding. That, I came to believe, was more proof, if proof was needed, of how distinguished our faculty is. In sum, I'm not sure that I should be receiving this award. Uh, perhaps it might be more appropriate to give it to the faculty as a whole. I do know that I was extremely lucky to have ended up here 44 years ago. Thank you again so much for this honor, and above all, thank you for the privilege of being part of such a wonderful place for so long. Thank you. Congratulations, Professor Singal. You are correct. The faculty here are all distinguished, and we as students and parents um, appreciate that. We were fortunate enough to have had you in the classroom and as a member of our community, so thank you. And thank you, Hannah and Ed, for your role in making this award possible. My name is Melissa Fasolo Gorzinski, and I'm from the class of 1998. My daughter, Emily, is a member of the class of 2026, and I am so proud to be able to share this moment with her this afternoon. I would now like to invite Professor of Sociology, Wes Perkins, to the podium as we begin our recognition of the 2020 recipient of the Distinguished Faculty Award, T. Dunbar Moody, Professor Emeritus of Sociology. Thank you all, it's wonderful to be here today. And uh, to congratulate, first of all, Dan, in addition to Dunbar, who I'm going to be speaking about, Dan uh, was a good colleague of mine on many committees, especially COFAC over the years. And I could have wonderful things to say about him, but that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, move on, but I just wanted, I was pleased to see you here today as well. Um, <clears throat> So to begin, let me confess that when I was writing my comments, I, when I sat down and wrote notes for comments about Dunbar Moody, I, I, when I looked back and read through my notes, this read like a half a, half a, um, a promotion review uh, report, and, and the other half was a love letter. And uh, I couldn't decide, do I do the professional thing or do I do the thing from the heart, not to, you know, and that sort of thing. So I just said, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a salad, it's a mixed group here. Uh, so uh, you're going to get a little of both. Um, first of all, Dunbar was educated in sociology and social anthropology at Rhodes University, earning his Bachelor of Science and a BA and an MA from Oxford in theology and a PhD in religion and society at Harvard University. He had, made, uh, uh, he had been brought to, uh, into the HWS in 1976. At that time, he was a senior professor himself, uh, brought in as a senior professor to chair uh, the combined department of anthropology and sociology. The department at that point had been through recent personnel changes from a long-term autocratic chair into a modern chairship structure that he was entering, and then transitions with tenure decisions that were sometimes controversial, and, so, and sociology was making the change to be a more modern curriculum uh, with greater emphasis on research on contemporary problems. So, 
it was at those moments he was entering into this changing world of the academy and, and the department here as well. I first met Dunbar in this context when I was applying for my first job as a college professor. I was uh, uh, fresh minted out of, uh, out of graduate school at, when I was at, at Yale, and then I, and I'd only been at large universities as an undergraduate at Purdue, and, and I had gotten a job offer uh, already when I was looking around at the University of California, at a big university there. And so I was thinking just big universities, and, and, but, but there was something that just didn't feel right about taking that position at that big research university, even though I love scholarship and I, I was very involved in scholarship. Um, and so at that point, um, I, I was delighted. Uh, I was invited to come to Hobart Moose Smith uh, to apply for a job, and I said, well, this will be interesting, a trip up to upstate New York. I don't know much about it. The weather was beautiful at the time and so forth, as we hear from lots of people who, who decide to come or stay. Uh, and, uh, and so like, I, I made the trip. I had put my application in, made the trip up, and uh, Dunbar was one of the first people, a chair of the department that, that I met. This was in 1978. Um, and I was delighted uh, by Dunbar's friendly, unassuming nature, the twinkle in his eye, and his English South African accent mm -hmm. and those expressions that always took me some uh, took me by surprise. Those things have all continued to date. Uh, yesterday in a text communication when we were not reaching each other by phone, he said, if not, just bung off an email to me. And I'm thinking, <laughs> bung off? <laughs> oh yes, that's Dunbar. <laughs> well, when I met uh, Dunbar, he struck me as a perfect model of the teacher-scholar also devoted to community service. I fell in love with HWS, its interdisciplinary way of thinking, its emphasis on both teaching and scholarship and on community engagement. Dunbar represented all of this and helped me immediately see it embodied in this school and, in, uh, and also embodied in his colleagues. So my choice was easy after that. Subsequently, I found even more so, Dunbar deftly developed a collaborating style of leadership and an openness to the wider range of subject matter that made the department an exciting place to join. Regarding teaching, here it sounds more like the, uh, the, the promotional review, or promotion review. <laughs> He doesn't need promotion. Uh, <laughs> regarding teaching, one alum summed up the, his experience saying, um, Dunbar Moody provided de decades of experience as a professor, academic, and family man to students seeking wisdom. This comment easily applies to his relationship with me and other faculty as well in our department through the decades. He was renowned for his class um, for his class on, uh, for our majors on sociological theory. His style of raising questions about the thinking of the founding sociologists and their works and, and um, for having his students collaborate in discussing and writing papers about the class were unusual teaching styles that we all began in the department began to appreciate from him. It was a critical juncture in students' intellectual development uh, taking this uh, classical theory course. His unique style of lecture and his pleasurable discussions spilled over into weekly student conversations and visits to his home and were generally created the label taking a moody course because everyone, at least in the department and among our majors, knew what that really meant and the experience that they might be getting. Regarding scholarship, uh, Dunbar's two books on South Africa were impressive contributions to uh, sociology and related fields. First, his book on Afrikaner, Afrikaner Dung Apartheid and the Sociological Phenomenon of Civil Religion that had been in introduced in the, into the discourse of, of sociology as a major, fairly new concept, uh, that idea of of uh, civil society takes on its own religiosity in some sense, and that could be translated uh, as sociologists did here to uh, the American experience, but certainly uh, for Dunbar looking at it from the perspective of Afrikaner in, 
and in the struggles within South Africa, a major uh, treatise and contribution to sociology and related disciplines. And then later, uh, his book, Going for Gold, appeared. His book documented the personal lives and political structures of the history of South African gold miners. And there have been many other scholarly articles he has added throughout his career to this field of study. He has also been a model for how to remain engaged with teaching and writing in, quote, retirement, in his positions and work in South Africa since retiring from HWS. He told me that if there is no one around during the latter part of this weekend here, and no one else wanting to talk to him or, or no one else to see, I have an article I have to revise for the Journal of South African Studies anyway. So he was already uh, moving on to his next project, if you will. As for community service, he has given countless hours to serving as chair at multiple points in time in our department and in other faculty committees as well. He has engaged in many larger community activities on campus and in Geneva over the years and has worked with South African religious leaders in a program he developed at Andover Newton Theological Seminary, bringing priests and pastors to, to that school with a, a very large and substantial set of grants that he got to run a program that brought them there during a two-year sabbatical that he had here um, uh, to discuss the, the current state of, of of uh, faith-based institutions and their role and the situation in South Af uh, Africa and so forth. In short, Dunbar teaches with great intellectual care. Always, in, he's, he always interacted with humility in his relations with colleagues and students and earnestly helped us along our way to wherever we were headed. I think anyone who has spent time with Dunbar already knows this. As a more personal note, Dunbar and I uniquely shared a background in theology as well as sociology. We talked often about the interface of sociology and our values, concern for social justice, and our faiths. Also, we both lost our wives and became widowers prematurely in our careers. He was a model of both humility and strength in the caring and grieving process, providing an invaluable life lesson for me and many others. To conclude, and this is the, uh, the promotion report, to conclude, I know that you all join me in being so pleased about the Distinguished Faculty Member Award that he receives today so deservedly, and so deservedly. The love letter part. Best wishes to you, Dunbar, for many, many more years of teaching, scholarship, and service. I love you. Miss Squeeze, uh, as a class of uh, 2007 graduate, uh, going to be talking about the birth well. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Minerva, or Minnie, as you may remember, and congratulations to Professor Singal. Um, I'm a 20, 2007 graduate of Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Today, it's my distinct honor and privilege to present the 2022 Distinguished Faculty Award to Professor Emeritus of Sociology, Dr. T. Dunbar Moody. So as you all know, while we're so fortunate to have so many wonderful professors here at HWS at the colleges, Professor Moody stands out to me and so many of my friends for these three distinct reasons. So number one, in his teaching, he showed us that everyone matters. Number two, he gave us, besides just the book learning encouragement, he gave us hope. And three, he really had his priorities, namely his tea time. <laughs> I'm sure many of you remember being invited over to his house with his wife Meredith and dog Tilly for some afternoon tea. These are the common themes that run together when alumni and friends remember their times with Dunbar. Some, some alumni recall, and they still cherish actually, <laughs> Professor Moody, the books from your courses <laughs> all these years later. They all seem to agree that he was an engaging teacher, a treasure trove of knowledge, 
and a mentor extraordinaire who, among other valuable things, challenged us to think in ways that we hadn't before. Friends who recently said that they remember so much of his course today, they also recalled being invited to his home with other students for lively discussions, and of course, tea. <laughs> I think ribose tea is, if I remember, <laughs> one of your favorites. In his classes, he cultivated an environment of collegial curiosity, which made learning a real genuine pleasure. He was always approachable and supportive with regards to his own classes or on any other subject that a student needed help with. He provided decades of experience as a professor, researcher, and family man. And um, to quote my dear colleague Thomas Baptiste, there are few men as unselfish and full of knowledge as uh, Dr. Moody to give guidance to students. And he is the definition of what a great professor is. In my own case, I met Professor Moody right at the right time. <laughs> I was in my junior year at HWS and I was trying to do it all. Double major, uh, study abroad, play on the field hockey team, be part of the women's collective and more. I had spent my summer at working at a domestic violence shelter in Syracuse, New York and working at a penitentiary to teach a class to women around um, resources that were available to help with the recidivism rate. Um, when I returned to campus, I realized I wasn't going to have enough credits to also study abroad and do all these fantastic things <laughs> with these high hopes that I had. So I met with Professor Moody and he gener was so generous with his time working with me to do an independent study on what I had learned um, working with women in the penitentiary. For me, I had rarely found so someone so willing to go above and beyond in coaching um, his or her students, but Dunbar did just that so unselfishly and more. So today in my own work at the Government Performance Lab at the Harvard Kennedy School, running a fellowship program there, I really take to heart Dunbar's shared wisdom that everyone matters, and I really constantly strive to incorporate your values. I would now like to read from a couple letters from alumni, which I think capture the significant impact of teaching and membership, mentorship of Professor Moody. So unfortunately, my dear friend, Leanne Ron Collado, could not be here. She's from the class of 2007. Um, she's now an assistant professor of econom economics, econ <laughs> economics at Franklin and Marshall College. And if she was here, she'd probably make you do like some sort of interpretive dance. So you'll have to bear with me. <laughs> she said, uh, my first year, I took Sociology 100 with Dunbar immediately after Principles of Economics. <laughs> I would leave my economics class fired up and outraged that humans were self-interested, rational actors, and markets would solve our society's problems. Luckily, I was heading to Dunbar's class, a space of questioning and deconstruction. Dunbar's teaching was unique in that he challenged students to criticize, but he also challenged us to hope. Dunbar always made it clear that he loved his job and would not trade it for any other thing. <laughs> I think it's not a surprise that um, Leanne went into academia and she writes that Dunbar's passion and commitment to teaching inspires her every day and that she will carry that wisdom um, for the rest of her life. From Annie Madado, class of 2000, she said, Professor Moody taught Sociology 101 in the spring of 1997. I received a C plus in that class, but I knew it was the major for me. <laughs> it wasn't about my grade. It was about Professor Moody and the concepts he was sharing. I could listen to him for hours and wanted to learn more. While Weber and Durkheim do not frequently cross my mind, I do regularly think about the time when Professor Moody brought tea for our class because the afternoon timing of it interrupted his tea time. <laughs> he is kind, caring, and a thoughtful member of the faculty and was a big part of my HWS experience. So we also have a few past students who would like to congratulate you, Dunbar. So we're going to cue a video here. I spent a lot of time getting to know him um, as a person as well as a professor and really learned a lot from him. I have fond memories of going over to his house for tea and talking about anything and everything from my honors thesis to our love of Martha's Vineyard. 
Professor Dunbar Moody was one of the finest faculty members that Hobart and William Smith Colleges ever had. It was a pleasure to know him and his wife, the late Meredith Aldrich Moody. I realized that both Dunbar and Meredith cared more about my scholarship applications or how I was doing academically. They cared about me as a whole person. Throughout my time at HWS, from bike accidents in South Africa to motto my senior year, Dunbar and Meredith really cared for me. You provided this wonderful colleagueship to all of us over all these years. Uh, you've, you know, lent your, you know, brilliant intellect to all of our endeavors, and it's just a pleasure to see you get this award. I wish him the best of luck and congratulations on the award. And I'm glad tonight that he can be recognized for his many contributions. Dunbar, congratulations on this very, very well-deserved um, award and recognition. And please know that I would not be the person I am today, I wouldn't be the parent I am today, I wouldn't be the scholar or the teacher I am today um, if it wasn't for you. It has been one of the highlights of my career to have you as a colleague, and um, I certainly appreciate you and congratulate you again on the DFA. So I'd like to close by stating my deep, deepest congratulations to Dunbar on receiving the Distinguished Faculty Award. In my opinion, and the opinion of so many of your students, no one could be more deserving of this honor. Please join me in recognizing Professor Emeritus of Sociology, Dr. T. Dunbar Moody, as the 2022 recipient of the HWS Distinguished Faculty Award. such a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I, um, I, 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 was, I was going to be a minister, I was going to be a priest. Um, and then uh, um, while, I, while I was doing my, my PhD, I was asked to, uh, um, to, to take over a, for a year a leave, leave of absence position at Wellesley College. I think Lou was there. <laughs> I never taught him. But uh, um, from the moment I walked into the classroom, I knew that that was my calling. I had to write the bishop <laughs> and explain the situation. So uh, it's wonderful that your comments have captured so well that side of me. Um, and, and then there's also the, the, uh, the, the social change side that, uh, that is fundamental, I believe. And uh, I mean, I grew, up, I grew up, you know, in South Africa. We left South Africa. I had a um, senior position at one of the top universities because a law was passed in South Africa that uh, the police could hold anybody for 90 days without any cause. Um, and uh, my wife, whose father was an eminent Boston lawyer, <laughs> just, just couldn't stay. And I realized as well that, that, we, that we couldn't stay. Um, uh, and, and then I got this letter out of the blue from J James Spates <laughs> asking me if I'd be interested. Um, in, in coming here, and I came here for an interview, and this place enchanted me, enchanted us. And, uh, um, 
So I came, I came as head of department. It was a messy time to begin with, uh, sorting things out. But once the things were sorted out, and this, and this is one of the things that, that, that I've learned since, and that makes me so grateful that I didn't stick around at the University of the Vitwatersrand. If you're, if you're a professor and head of department, you're basically an administrator. You do a bit of teaching. I taught the intro class, it had 500 kids in it. <laughs> I mean, how, are you, how am I going to engage with, 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 with a, a class that size in the way that I feel called to engage with my students? So that coming here was a sort of a revelation to me that it was possible to teach at a university. And that teaching as a calling did mean um, uh, uh, that, that, that one, one could connect with students. I used to bring classes down into small groups, have them talk to each other, talk back to me, um, try, and, try, and, try and get some kind of a serious conversation going. And, it, and judging from what people have been saying, it worked. <laughs> 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 so, 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 uh, uh, you know, so, so here I am, very, very grateful for what Hobart and William Smith provided for me in the way of students. And I'm also so happy because I thought when I thought of what I was going to say here that I'd be talking about myself all the time. And I have been. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, ha having been preceded by the accounts from, from students, I realized that it worked. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and very grateful for this Distinguished Faculty Award. Thank you. my uh, happy task to uh, bring us to a close here, but this could have gone on for, for some time hearing from our colleagues. So <laughs> thank you, Dan and Dunbar, for those lovely remarks and join with our provost, Dr. Kirk. And welcoming all of you here, returning faculty members that are here, current faculty members, past recipients of the Distinguished Faculty Award future recipients of the day, <laughs> our alums who care and act thoughtfully to engage in important ways um, to nominate, curate, and bring forth um, these great nominees today. I was thinking with Cliff's and Wes's beautiful statements to their colleagues that what this entire event really shows is the centrality of our faculty and how it has informed and bolstered and continued our culture here. Because Dan hired Cliff Hood, Dunbar brought in Wes Perkins. Both of them will conclude their service here at the colleges this year. Wow. At our commencement at the end of the academic year, their time here We'll close this chapter. <clears throat> but the moment should not pass without our acknowledgement and collective thanks to us and to Cliff for their service here. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great to have the Coopers up here. Ed Cooper, who I work closely with on the board, and you do not have to worry about your baccalaureate essay. <laughs> we expunge all trustee work. <laughs> <laughs> but how proud I am to see Hannah and her own public service in your journey, and certainly Minerva as well. Thank you. The Kennedy School, I'm so proud of your important work there. 
uh, and they represent the very best of our graduates, certainly, in coming forth on behalf of our alumni and congratulating and bringing forth. So today we have a Faulkner scholar, a scholar of South African gold miners here, but I think what comes across most centrally to me is their impact on our students and the lives. We talk a lot about Hobart and William Smith as a place that is rich in the relationships that our students enjoy with our faculty, and that is very much on display here today. Dan, it is great to see your family here. We warmly welcome Sarah and your children and grandchildren here. Uh, I hope they have heard and can appreciate and take the pride uh, for, of you and what you have brought to this campus. Our time together um, on COFAC and various committees, you were a very patient tutor to a <laughs> young and inexperienced president, for which I am very grateful. But our shared love of jazz and interest in history and world events, we share many aspects of that. And when you said you were incredibly lucky, I think you said extremely lucky to be at Hobart and William Smith, I think, and I hope you feel, take for this today, our sense, our collective sense that we were incredibly lucky that you were on this faculty uh, and engage in the life and the mind of our students and continuing with our graduates. So once again, to Professor Singala, thank you. Laura, <laughs> it is great to have you back in Geneva. I now know what T. Dunbar movie stands for. <laughs> What is the T? It's T. <laughs> but it is great to have you here and great certainly to, to meet Claire. We warmly welcome her to Geneva and to Hobart and William Smith. And um, my association, like with Dan, Dunbar held many important committee positions. And he too told me what to do quite a bit. <laughs> And if I was smart, I listened to that, and he certainly helped me along the way. Wes said he offered a salad of remarks. It was a beautiful salad. But he was talking about the confusion at the time that you came in with autocratic chairs and controversial tenure cases, sitting with the provost and said, I'm glad we solved all that here. <laughs> Check. <laughs> but for me and for Mary, our attachment to Dunbar exceeds the classroom because his late wife, Meredith, co-founded Children's Hours, an important Montessori school where our daughter Kathleen studied for three years. And it was her formation in that classroom with Tracy Spates, it really allowed her to, to appreciate learning and reading. It prepared her to come to Hobart and William Smith. So I remember Meredith today, certainly, and appreciate that. I think many of us think of Dunbar and think of his dog, Tilly. <laughs> Ted Ob has a beautiful statue that graces this campus right outside of Stern. And I was always rather resentful as a dog owner <laughs> that Tilly would just follow Dunbar, no chain, <laughs> just walk behind him, he just dutiful. And everyone loved Tilly, because it was a dutiful, obedient dog. <laughs> I had a more complicated relationship <laughs> with Tilly. I don't know if you remember in Dunbar, we were at the Elizabeth Blackwell Award I think in 20 something, my first term as president, where we were honoring Dr. Catherine Jeffords Shorey, who was the first Episcopal bishop, head of the Episcopal Church. And she was receiving the Elizabeth Blackwell Award. And Tilly would often run around campus unchained, including coming into the Vandevoort room in the middle of the Blackwell Award, which was cute for a while, and then, <laughs> and then Tilly came up to the front and I was sitting in the front with um, the most reverend Catherine Jeffords Shorey, head of the Episcopal Church, 
until he came in right in front of the stage, squatted down, and urinated all over the room. Of course, everyone was laughing. I tried to be on stage and posing. I did observe that she christened or something, but Tilly represented the very best of O'Brien. <laughs> A lot of people do that to me daily. <laughs> but I would say, in all seriousness and purposefulness of this great award, and Bill and Melissa, thank you so much in the committee for what you've done for us here and bringing us together. Because we think a lot about Hobart and William Smith's history coming off our bicentennial. We think a lot about the privilege of thinking through our faculty, with our faculty, the curriculum that will animate the next generation of teacher scholars, of students. And as we go into our third century at Hobart and William Smith. But the connective tissue I think we see today is from our students with nominations of more than 300 that were submitted, with their faculty colleagues um, reflecting with intimate understanding of their work and appreciation of what they brought to their departments. And that through line informs today's Hobart and William Smith. And it informs our next century. So on behalf of our board of trustees and the colleges, I thank you both for giving us that opportunity with today's faculty, hired in the ways that you brought forth today's speaker, informed with the culture and the appreciation of being a student-centered institution while your own scholarship is known and appreciated. And it makes me among many reasons why I'm so proud to be at this podium at this time and at this place to honor Dunbar and Dan. Thank you so much. Thanks, President Karen. Uh, I'm Paul Wasman, I'm the uh, class of 2007 and president of the Hobart Alumni Association, uh, and I'm all that stands between you and refreshments, so I'll be quick. Uh, on behalf of the Hobart Alumni Association and William Smith Alumni Association, uh, specifically the DFA committee, uh, we are delighted that you could all join us today. Um, Professor Singal and Moody, congratulations. It's wonderful to be with you. Um, that concludes our program, so please, refreshments, uh, mingle, um, have a good time, reminisce, um, and uh, carry on. Thanks. <laughs>